such an important issue. You can't learn if you're not in class. It and a, I know uh, they're trying to address that. Yeah, it has a long term effect on a kid's development into adulthood. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, going to get to that, but first, good morning. And thanks for being with us on this Wednesday. I'm Mimi Lang. I'm Brandon Hudson. Uh, on the heels of President Biden's historic visit to the UAW picket lines yesterday, former President Trump will make his way to Metro Detroit today. And the location that he selected to meet with workers is rather interesting. Fox 2's Robin Murdoch is live with what we know about Mr. Trump's plans. Robin. Good morning, uh, Amy and Brandon. Yeah, some people are certainly questioning why he would choose a non-union facility to talk to UAW members at. As you know, uh, the members outside the Ford Michigan assembly plant, they have now been striking for almost two weeks. They have been fighting for their fair share, and now that fight is bringing both the president and a former president to Michigan in just a matter of days. A dark and cold start to day 13 on the picket line for striking workers outside the Ford Michigan assembly plant here in Wayne. They are bundled up with no plans of budging until their demands for better wages and benefits are met. A burn barrel helping them warm up as they walk while an appearance by the 45th president Donald Trump has their union boss fired up. I find a pathetic irony that the former president is going to hold a rally for union members at a non-union business. And you know, all you have to do is look at his track record. During an interview on CNN's The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, UAW President Sean Fain blasted both the setting and the timing of Trump's talk with automakers in Macomb County set for later tonight. Trump is expected to speak with 500 past and present UAW members at Drake Enterprises, an auto supplier in Clinton Township. Our workers at GM were on strike for 60 days for two months. They were out there on the picket lines. I didn't see him hold a rally. I didn't see him um, stand up at the picket line, and I sure as hell didn't hear him comment about it. On Tuesday, however, we did see President Joe Biden visiting with union members at General Motors Willow Run Redistribution Center in Belleville, making him the first sitting president ever on the picket line. The commander in chief offered words of encouragement to the 18,000 striking workers who have so far walked out on 41 big three facilities in 21 states. Made a lot of sacrifices, gave up a lot. And the companies were in trouble. But now they're doing incredibly well. And guess what? You should be doing incredibly well, too. According to the union, Stellantis, General Motors, and Ford combined have made more than $250 billion in North American profits in the last decade alone. Trump, we are told, will skip the second Republican presidential debate to take part in tonight's event at Drake Enterprises, an event you will not find UAW President Sean Fain anywhere near. I see no point in meeting with him because I don't think the man has any has any bit of care about what our workers stand for, what the working class stands for. He serves a billionaire class, and that's what's wrong with this country. Yeah, the striking workers outside the Ford Michigan assembly plant were actually joined by the president of the AFL-CIO today. That is the largest federation of unions, and it represents about 12.5 million people. So the support out here for these union workers, it does continue. Now, in regards to Trump's visit tonight, he's expected to speak at Drake Enterprises in Macomb County at 8 o'clock. We will, of course, have a crew there to bring you the very latest. For now, we are live outside the Ford Michigan Assembly plant here in Wayne. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Well, Robin, we certainly heard you say, and we heard it from him, uh, Sean Payne saying, I, I'm not going to be anywhere near there. But have, have you heard anything about any plans for any of the unions to actually picket uh, his, his appearance there tonight? You know, I have not heard anything about that yet, uh, Amy, but as you know, uh, in past appearances by the past president, uh, Donald Trump, we have seen a lot of protesters come out and uh, speak their mind, holding signs and things like that. So I would not be surprised if that is the case tonight. I believe uh, my colleague Dave Kinchin will be following that. And of course, if it does happen, you will see it at the 10 o'clock news. Back to you. That's right. Of course, our uh, photographers are already out there getting all set up and everything so uh, certainly a big story for tonight and we appreciate your preview as always Robin Murdoch thank you so much 
For the second time in a few days, lives of picketers are endangered. On Friday, there was a fight that erupted when a passerby yelled racial slurs in center line. And in Genesee County, a hidden run driver plows into a crowd of picketers outside a GM plant in Swartz Creek. That's near Flint. Police say the driver left the Flint Processing Center, hit five people, and then never stopped. None of the injuries are serious. Investigators are now trying to figure out who the driver is. Our local right now is stressing to everybody this is a peaceful protest to stand up, you know, in solidarity and, you know, be on your P's and Q's and be safe. You know, everybody wants to go home. They have families and, you know, make this a positive thing and not a negative thing. But again, a peaceful demonstration is disrupted. And in a statement, GM says that it's working with authorities on this incident. It is committed to the health and safety of all its employees. And the latest contract offer from Stellantis to the UAW has a lot of people concerned. They're afraid it could lead to job cuts. Picketers in Centerline calling for the end of tears and asking for higher wages. They also want their jobs protected. It was mentioned that they want, like, this facility, this is a Mopar, and they want to shut down 18 facilities, and these people will be moved to other places, and that's, you know, that's interrupt your home life, where you live, where your grassroots. So, yeah, that is a big concern. Well, Stellantis says its proposal includes a 21% wage increase and $1 billion in retirement security benefits, along with job security. Hey, don't, don't touch me, bro. 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 Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Don't touch me. Put your hands. Don't touch me. Stop. New this morning in a show of transparency. Police body cam video shows the moment leading up to a rough arrest in Detroit. The department released the video from that arrest to Fox 2. So this after cell phone video from witnesses last week continues to get a lot of attention on social media. This happened on Detroit's east side. Police arresting the man while many others watched. Several onlookers jumped on an officer leading to a struggle until more police arrived. Well, the man's family says it was all a big misunderstanding. It all started as police drove up and saw this, a man trying to get into a vehicle, the man claiming it was his vehicle and he'd locked his keys inside. But police eventually arrested him. It turns out it really was his car and police ended up releasing him. But now DPD giving us the video showing what led up to it all. I can't just roll past you trying to give me a window and not do something. You know what I mean? I not verify you. your truck. You can verify from that. This is, this is my truck. What's your name, boss? Oh, ain't about to do nothing. I'm not telling you my name. I told you I don't answer questions. Okay, sir, you have to tell me your name. I don't have to tell you. You nothing. do have to tell me I don't have name. to tell you my name. I'm you am do. I under arrest? You're detained right now, yes. No, I'm not. For what? You are. Because of, from what it looks like, you're trying to break into this car. And, and he telling you this is my car. They telling you this is my so, car. This is my family, so, bro. I'm give not, me your name, I'm and I can verify that. I'm not verifying that. I'm not giving them nothing. They know that. He, I just told them that. I just, I just got out of the car and locked my keys. My man. Man, don't, don't, touch, me, don't, don't, don't touch me, bro. My man. Don't touch me, bro. My man. Don't touch me. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Don't touch me. Put your don't hands. Don't touch me. Stop. Don't so they test the exchange, then escalates, and from there, police put the 34-year-old man in cuffs on a porch. One officer pulled out a gun. He is pointing it at a witness's dog that was on a leash, leading to a frantic situation. Take a look at this. Thankfully, no one is hurt, but you see the gun pointed at that dog there and the dog's owner. Uh, not who at the people who were there now as we mentioned police later released the 34 year old man and the department put two officers on administrative duty pending the investigation this incident remains under review detroit police say they're releasing a statement in response to the body cam video it reads in part quote at this time the department's review of the available footage suggests that the officer's initial questioning of the individual was based on a legitimate law enforcement concern the department is releasing the available footage in the interest of transparency end quote all right, so listen to this resume. It's a guy who's won four state baseball championships, but the Orchard Lake St. Mary coach uh, is fired. He has a familiar last name in these parts. He is Matt Petrie. 
the son of uh, former Tiger Dan Petrie and brother of Red Wings defenseman Jeff Petrie, the school fired its coach for inappropriate contact with students. The school is accusing him of violating its employee conduct policy. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office is investigating claims that he requested inappropriate photos from students. The school says that it learned of the violation on Monday and immediately fired him. Petrie is 38 years old. He coached St. Mary's baseball for 13 years, helping to turn it into a perennial power at one point, winning 84 straight games.